Channel 4 British Documentary Film Foundation. This is an interest point. Who here is a documentary filmmaker as opposed to fiction? There are a couple. Okay. So what I'm talking about is um, mainly applies to documentaries but can be transferred into other areas of filmmaking. Um, we do quite a lot of different strands in the organisation, so I'd encourage you to have a look at our website to find out everything. But I'm going to look at three major points today. The first of which is an event that we run called The Good Pitch. And what we identified um, when we founded the foundation was that the broadcast system of commissioning a film, screening a film on television, and then it disappearing just wasn't really of the most benefit to filmmakers. And we wanted to reinterpret how you, A, get your film kind of financed, and also how it's distributed in terms of the partners that you work with to make that happen. So three years ago, we founded an event called The Good Pitch. And this meant that filmmakers would pitch their idea for a documentary specifically with a social kind of action message um, to coincide with it. Now, around the pitching table, you'd normally see um, kind of broadcast commissioning ex executives um, or private fin financiers. And what we want to do is bring in anybody else who might be interested in that film. So, for example, if you are making a climate change film, the members of Greenpeace are probably going to be very interested in that. And that organisation should be key to the kind of formation of, A, the kind of film's kind of overall kind of structure and narrative, but vitally how it gets um, kind of seen by its audience. So this is a site that um, I'd encourage you to go and have a look at, which is goodfilm.org. And here we profile what we call kind of good films. So these are documentary films which have a kind of call to action for the audience. And we now list them in terms of the good pitch that we've been doing. So this year we're doing New York, San Francisco and London. And as you can see here, there's a list of the eight films which have been pitched at the event. And then down below are the partner organisations that attend. And in the first one, we had 50 organisations in attendance. We now get between 300 and 400 delegates at each event. And these range, Dogworth is a traditional distributor, well, a kind of social issue distributor here in the UK. My Film is an online um, short film platform. Then you have the British Council, YouGov. Um, Gucci brands, so a whole range of different organisations. And I just kind of suggest you can have a look there and see the types of people who are actually interested in getting involved with film. And that kind of, the, the brokering of those relationships is quite a kind of tentative, kind of slowly breaking in a kind of um, conversation with them. But once you bring them in and they're, they're really kind of encouraged to get involved, that can really kind of open doors for you in terms of fiscal elements um, and non-fiscal. So... The good pitch that we've run um, has so far leveraged over $2 million in support for these documentary films. But as I say, you can't really quantify kind of Greenpeace saying, yes, my 5 million members are going to know about your film because your trailer's on our homepage. So there's kind of different ways there. And up here, there's a learning tab, and we kind of summarise um, kind of what we've learned in these last three years. But I'd say kind of have a look at kind of all the essence in this website and kind of then apply it to fiction work if that's what you're doing. Obviously, it won't work for every film, but there are kind of crossovers. Who here has heard of the end of the line? Anyone? Okay, a couple. Who suddenly kind of saw a rise in press awareness about sustainability, ethical fish, where did your fish come from, anything like that in the last kind of year? Who shops in press and manger ever and buys a sandwich? Anyone notice they now have little stickers that say this tuna is sustainably caught? Probably didn't notice that, but they do. On the back of that film, a whole kind of market shift happened, and we wanted to track that and kind of make an evaluation. So we've just launched the kind of evaluation report there, and I say it's just good to have a read about it and see how you can, again, prove to a funder that you're actually doing something impactful. Um, that was the kind of three main ones I wanted you to have a look at. And then just briefly, the other element um, that we work with is good screenings. Um, and we collaborated with a filmmaker called um, Franny Armstrong, Who's called, um, heard of The Age of Stupid? Everyone's heard. A lot of hand waving. This is good today. Um, so, Franny um, is a maverick in terms of the one woman machine about making things happen. And she launched her own distribution platform called Indie Screenings, which is a way for anybody in the world to screen her film, which gave her a screening fee to go back into her pocket. In the first six months, she raised over £100,000 using this system. Because rather than saying, here, nice distributor, take my film. You can own everything, and you can choose the cinemas, and you can choose the broadcaster. She said, no, everything's going to be on a non-exclusive basis, and I'm going to keep some ownership of my content because I spent five years making this. And then she said, anybody can screen it, and if you are a school group of 20 of you in Leeds, you can, char you can pay me £30. But if you're a business conference, maybe in the Labour Party annual conference, you can, char you can pay me £1,000. So the, the kind of tiering of that fee was appropriate to the type of audience that wanted to watch it. And this is the great thing, because there are other distributors who say, 
give me 250 quid, otherwise you're not watching the film. And that's really bad. Someone wants to watch your film, but they're being told no because they can't afford that initial license fee. And that is such a kind of stop guard for a lot of people wanting to interact with your content. I'm going to talk to you about The Cosmonaut, which is a film project by Riot Cinema Collective. That's the name of our uh, production company. This is a little production company based in Madrid, in Spain. Uh, we've never done a film before. And, well, this goes back from kind of two years ago, three years ago, uh, the director of the film uh, has a short film in mind. Uh, then he thought he could make a, a, a feature film out of it. And he realizes that it, it was impossible for him to make a feature film. Like he, he, could, he didn't want to spend like three years knocking doors of producers and they, they would tell him no, no, no. So he, uh, he, have, uh, he uh, heard about crowdfunding, and that's how it all started. So this is the normal business model. Uh, you first raise finance. When you got the money, you make the film. Then you sell it to a distributor. And then is when you start to raise awareness, hype, build audience, so you can sell this film to the audience, and the final step is exhibition. Uh, in the Cosmo, we kind of uh, do things in a different way. This is more or less our scheme. We start making low-cost media, uh, such as a teaser trailer I'm, I'm going to show you at the end. Uh, and we. Uh, we talk with our community and we, we participate with them since the, the beginning of the production, okay? So when, when we have not even the final script, just a, a script, a draft for a script, uh, we put it online, we make a website, and we start talking with, with people. Uh, so there, there's the launch, uh, and then before you got the movie finished, even before you got a final script, is when you start to raise aware, uh, awareness of your movie, to build an audience, to collaborate with the audience. Uh, there's something that we did that was uh, quite successful. When we released our first teaser trailer, which I'm going to show you at the end, uh, we decided we were going to make a contest out of it. So we put all the footage that we have shot online so people can download it and remix it in their own way to make alternative versions of the, uh, the teaser trailer. And for a free, I think, free five uh, better ones, we, we would uh, give uh, awards, uh, prizes like t-shirts, uh, cameras, and stuff. So more than 80 uh, remixes of the teaser trailer were made. Uh, it was a great success. Uh, a lot of people uh, knew about us uh, uh, because of this contest, and this is that's a good, uh, maybe our best example of collaborating with audience. We of course have a Facebook account, Twitter account, a blog. We uh, started talking about uh, a first trip we did to to Russia to see locations for the movie. Because well, I, I haven't told you <laughs> what this this movie about. Uh, but it's a sci-fi film about a cosmonaut, a Russian cosmonaut who gets lost, lost in space. Uh, but when you see the teaser trailer, you will get a better idea. So as I said, you collaborate with the audience, you build an audience, and then is when you started to raise finance. Uh, one of the ways is crowdfunding, another one is sponsorship and pre-sale. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. <coughs> So you do all this, and then you ask yourself, OK, do I have enough audience? There's enough audience for, the, for this film to be successful. Yes, you make the film. No, you keep doing the same thing. Uh, we've been doing this for around two years, and we are going to shoot finally this in about April, June this, this year. We're casting right now. Uh, and we didn't get all the money we wanted, but uh, if some of you were at the other building this morning, as, as Elliot said from the Renders Film Festival. You just shoot with the money you have.
So roughly, depending on whose figures you believe, a third to three quarters of all the films made in the world never come to the UK, and the UK has a big appetite for film. Um, fortunately, other countries like Peru and Greece and um, Afghanistan or wherever, most of their programming that's on television, this, this works to our advantage, which is why you've got to make your films international, most of their programming is acquisition. And so you have, you've got to be selling to your investors something that is going to sell abroad. Too many of the films I distribute are just aimed at the UK market, and they're going to fail for, for lots of different reasons. But that film may appeal to people in Greece or Afghanistan or Peru. They wanting that 80% of some of those countries' <coughs> programming is acquisition, and that's why they're so incredibly important. Um, for your crowdfund, the, the, the people you go to, I mean, there the, are the lots of people. Within the theatre, I, I, and to some extent, I went to a screening of a, a Nick Moran film, which Carnaby made. It wasn't particularly very good. And I was amazed that there was a huge champagne reception. This is why Carnaby are rather brilliant and they get lots and lots of, they don't, their films are, leave a lot to be desired. But they, um, I met all these people they, and they were like shopkeepers and people had put in like a thousand pounds, 1500 pounds, 2000 pounds, and they had not, never expected to get this money back. They wanted the fun of it. They loved the idea that they were at the Cannes Film Festival. They weren't at the Cannes Film Festival, they were in the Cannes market. They paid for their own hotels, their own flights out there. They never saw any money back from that film, um, but they liked the experience of it all. And that's what you've got to tap into. That's what crowdfunding does. And I'm slightly skeptical of all the crowdfunding sites because there's too many of them and there's loads of producers on there because as somebody said earlier, it's very competitive. You don't want him or her to get the money. You want it to get it for yourself. And Yorkshire happens to be, Leeds, where we are now, is this, is the, this country's second financial capital um, and there is so much money here that the big secret is getting them in. I, I, speak to, I spoke to some people in York who are angel investors. I spoke to some people in Harrogate who are angel investors. And they've looked at the film industry, but the film industry has never come towards them and seen what they wanted. And a lot of these people don't mind losing money, but they wanted to be, you know, want to be part of it. So you've got to find a way of including them. And what the theatre does is that they continually, in the old days it used to be, by letter, now it's by email, it's so easy to do, and continually involve them, let them know what's happening, keeping them going. The man who gives me the 50,000 revolving fund, he, he's always assumed he's going to lose it all, but every now and again I do give him a check back. But he loves it, and he's in a very dull job, and he likes that excitement. And that's what you can do. But for God's sake, do not lie about what the potential is because that's the thing that infuriates so many of them because it's not realistic. And really do seriously think about distributing it yourself because you're going to sell it better than anyone else. And the cinemas are getting more and more. It's more difficult for me to get my small films in there. And if it's difficult for me, it's going to be difficult for you. So think about going straight to the other platforms. Uh, already Amazon are coming on and they're coming on really aggressively. They've just bought Love Film and the reason is they want to be the number one site. In 10 years time, you will be going to your film. There will be head of acquisitions at Amazon and they'll put them on the platform and they will be, de why go through a distributor? They, they, they just want films, they don't care where they come from, just decent films that they can rent out. And Amazon is extraordinary. I did something quite unique with them about two years ago, which I won't tell you because nobody since has done it since. But what was amazing is the way that they can identify very, very easily um, people who are interested in your genre, and they can bring them to it by sending them emails, by every time they go up on Amazon. I don't know if you've seen it whenever you do. If you like this, you'll like this one, if you bought this. Um, and that's going to be very, very important for all of us. And I would urge you to think about going to be a distributor. It was, I, didn't, I never wanted to do it, and I, I was forced to do it because it was the only way I could make a decent return. And it, you know, the thing about distribution is you're the last money in and you're the first one out. And why give that to somebody like me?